In this lecture, we will learn about CPU scheduling. So here it means that if multiple threads are there in your ready queue, okay, so you have a ready queue in our operating system and you have the threads inside them or processes. So how you decide or schedule all the threads? So that will be our topic. And in this one, we will learn about the the simplest scheduling algorithm that is known as first come first serve. Whoever comes first, he will be served first. So this is the algorithm. So now let's try to see. So what it says. So first come first serve. So you have a queue. Whoever is the first one, he will be served first. That's simple. So this queue in early systems, so whenever in your operating system, what happened, whichever process came first, then it was scheduled first on the CPU. And in present operating system, it basically means that if you have some kind of CPU cycle, if a process is using the CPU, then it is fine. But when it uses the thread blocks or it uses some input output and all, then that thread now will go into the input output queue and it will come out of the cpu queue so this is there so next thing is we will look at one example so we have process three processes p1 p2 and p3 okay and they have burst time how much time they need to do their work is 24 for the first one p1 three seconds for the second one and three seconds for the third one now if you make a gantt chart so that is i don't know if i'm pronouncing correctly but gantt chart so here you have if i make schedule the process p1 first then p2 and p3 because three processes are there you can schedule them in any order okay so three factorial ways will be there let's say i first schedule p1 then p2 and then p3 okay then what happens on this timeline what will happen is you will have P1 will take 24 seconds, then from 24 to 27 seconds, P2 will run because that's 3 seconds. And at 27, T is equal to 27 seconds, P3 will run and it will take till 30 seconds. So now waiting time, what's the waiting time? So let's try to understand what is waiting time. So waiting time is basically I go into the queue. I enter the queue and how much time I have to wait before I can be served. I can go to the counter and I will be served. So that's the waiting time. So here the waiting time for process one. So it goes into the queue and it is served. So waiting time for one is zero. Waiting time for process two, it waits for that long work of P1 and it gets its serving at T is equal to 24 seconds. So waiting time is 24. For process 3, the waiting time is even quite longer, so it's 27 seconds. So average waiting time for all the three is, so W1 plus W2 plus W3 by 3. So it will be something like 27 plus 24, 7, 4, 11, 51 by 3, so it is 17 seconds. So this is the average waiting time assuming that all p1 p2 p3 came at the same instant of time and but p1 somehow was scheduled first then p2 second and p3 third now let's try to see so average waiting time as we saw it is 17 seconds average completion time so what is average completion time it means at what time you are completing the job that is the average completion time so for P1 it is 24 seconds, P2 ends at 27 seconds, P3 at 30 seconds. So this 24 plus 27 plus 30 by 3, so 27 is your average completion time. So this is there. So now these are some of the parameters that we see and these are the parameters that will tell how good your scheduling algorithm is working. So short one thing is there if you have a very long process and short processes are behind them then your waiting time will increase isn't it because waiting time unnecessarily it became more for p2 and p3 and hence the completion time also now let's try to look this was the worst case in fact that longer jobs are scheduled 
before the shorter jobs but what happens if we do other way around shorter jobs first so p2 and p3 are first to be served then p1 now you see that the waiting time is very less for p1 it is zero so p1 it is six seconds for p2 it's zero and p3 it is three seconds it's just have to wait for the cpu so average time is six plus three nine divided by three so it's three seconds average completion time p2 finishes at three seconds p3 at six seconds and p1 at 30 seconds so it's 30 plus 6 plus 3 divided by 3 so 13 seconds so now in now you can see in the second case average waiting time is much better okay before it was 17 now it's just waiting time is three seconds so just by permutation of your job scheduling and average completion time is also now it's 13 initially it was 27 so it's more by reduced more by more than 50 percent so first come first serve has some pros and cons like everything else in the world and the thing is it's very simple first come first serve no nothing really difficult about it but if your shorter jobs are there behind the longer jobs they get stuck and they increase the waiting time and response time for your algorithm scheduling algorithm so this is there for the first come first serve algorithm next time we will look at another scheduling algorithm which is known as round robin algorithm so i hope you understand this thanks a lot please give comments and subscribe to my youtube channel thanks a lot